Good day. Uh, nowadays, everyone might be probably asking about what it really means by Industry 4.0. And maybe some of you called it as the Industrial Internet of Things. As for me, this is the era of digital digitalization. You also might be asking about what is IO-Link, what are the benefits and advantages over an analog signal. So I decided to do some research and in today tips and tricks we will have a quick technical review do a live testing and actual plc programming by connecting a temperature sensor to directly to the plc and an ifm ionic master to the network and connect it to the siemens s7 1200 uh, cpu and i will use a tia portal version 14 and I will highlight the features and advantages and emphasize as simple as possible to show as to which uh, signal is easy, simple, and user-friendly in terms of PLC integration, maintenance, accuracy, installation, in providing diagnostic. I will also have some personal insight on what will be the future possibilities. So I'm dividing the topic into two exercises. In the first exercise, I will going to connect a temperature sensor from IFM with model TR2432 and will feed 0 to 10 volt signal directly into an analog PLC input card. On this exercise, I'll be using a PLC from Siemens. So um, just a quick background on what's happening inside the PLC. The sensor will provide 0 to 10 volts analog signal and PLC will convert that integer values in which a 0 to 10 volt signal will be converted into 0 to 27,648 uh, data word. You can find this information from, it, from its manual the IFM temperature sensor, on the other hand, got a factory default settings of minus 40 uh, degrees Celsius as the analog start point or ASP and will represent the 0 volts and 300 degrees Celsius will represent the 10 volts as the analog endpoint or AAP but on the unit itself, I rescale it to 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius as the analog start point and analog endpoint. So I will connect the uh, analog output and it will be the white wire. The brown wire will brown wire will be the 24 volts and the blue one will be the uh, common. The second exercise I'm connecting the temperature sensor to an IFM ionic master and get the digital data uh, and tra tra will transmit that into the Ethernet cable, um, transmitted as well in a, into a propinet, propinet field bus industrial protocol. I pre-assigned the IP address of the PLC and the Ionic Master as well as my programming laptop. It has to be on the same network range and subnet mass. If you want to know some tips and tricks on how to do it, kindly watch the uploaded video about IP address configuration under my channel. Before we proceed to the actual exercises, let's have a review first and compare these two types of uh, signal. So in a conventional uh, system, values of an analog sensor undergo several A to D conversion until they finally reach your PLC or HMI. In this example, a pressure sensor reads 5.5 bars. In order for the microprocessor to process the analog reading of an analog instrument, in which in this scenario, a pressure transmitter, it has to be converted into a digital, then it will convert it back to analog. The sensor will pass the signal in the cable and transmit that into the PLC input cards. The PLC will convert again the analog to, digi to digital 
to process the data. So throughout this process, there will be a loss of accuracy and pre precision along the way, in which we will try to see literally if we can distinguish it on this exercise. <clears throat> in an IO-Link system, there, are, there is only one conversion of analog to digital. The IO-Link master will transmit the digital data directly to the PLC. Um, it, could be a, it could be through the uh, Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus, or Ethercat industrial protocol. Right, so um, so for the first exercise, I will jump directly to TIA portal software. However, if you want to know on how to connect or do the hardware configuration of the Ionic Master in the TIA portal software, then kindly watch one of my uploaded video with the title Integrating IFM IOLink Master to Siemens S7-1200 PLC. It's been uh, made by uh, IFM itself. Or you can just kindly search it on to my channel. So, the first step to do is to normalize the analog coming from the sensor. The PLC will provide a data word in a form of uh, integer and convert that into real value from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. Then after, we must scale the normalized value to the minimum and maximum value of the engineering units that it represents. In our example, it will be temperature. Step 7 provides the norm x and scale x instruction. You can find it on the software or PLC manual. Let me put two empty uh, boxes instruction in the network and like I said uh, you can just simply search the norm x here on top and the second instruction box we have we will put this scale x and the end the input of the norm x will be integer so we have to put integer and it will be converted into real value and the normalized value we have to convert that from real into real now the first requirement in the field will be the minimum value so what information sh shall, shall I put on here? So if we go back here, like I said, the PLC will uh, process the data and provide integer value. So in our case, we have a data word. So the zero, volt, zero volts represent zero. So we have to put that on the mean and then the uh, minimum and then the Maximum, we have to put the 27,648. Okay, let's put that one first. Zero. And here, 27,648. Now, this value, we have to assign the input word address on where did we uh, connect the sensor. So, in order for me to know that, you have to go to the uh, network and just double click the PLC here. So this CPU got two analog inputs and I got two channel, channel zero with an input word address of IW64 and the other one is IW66. I connect the analog uh, wire to channel 0, so I will use this address, IW64. So let's go back to the here. So I will put IW64, and then I will rename this tag as the temporary 
TR2432 channel 0 okay and then the norm the norm x instruction uh, is real so we need a double word to store these 32 bits of, in, of uh, information so we have to put it to one of the memory location in the PLC so let's say I will put memory double world 10 that's my memory location and I will rename this tag as D TR2432 TR2432 normalize normalize click enter and then on the scale X well, we can just copy this and put this one into here. Now, um, the next question is on the scale X uh, instruction. What should I put on this uh, field? So let's go back again to this one. So the temperature sensor um, got a factory default of minus 40 but I rescaled that to 0 degrees Celsius and also 300 degrees Celsius as the factory of the analog endpoint but again I rescaled that to 100 so this is the value that you will put into the scale X let's say I got here as 0 degrees Celsius in here I'll put 100 degrees Celsius now um, the output of the scale X uh, I said the normalized value from norm X takes up to 32 bits so if, you use, if we use MD11 or MD10 uh, rather we cannot use MD11, MD12, MD13 because it will overlap, overlap, the, overlap on some memory area of the uh, Memory, memory area of the uh, PLC or the CPU. I will, I will try to explain that one a little bit. So let me put this information. You can find this memory address in the step 711, but as an overview, you can see it on the table. So um, there are several address area in the CPU and this never interfere that's for sure unless you put it wrong so the process the process image input table which is the i let's say i 0, 0.0 that's one one bit um is a whole different address area from memory so it will never interfere with an address of another area let's say for example if you will put i y i 0, 0.0 and m 0, 0.0 it will not interfere uh, from uh, in the location so uh, the memory address or m area can can be addressed by bit either uh, 1.0 or a byte MB100 uh, or a memory word could be MW100 so that consists of two bytes or a double word or MD100 that consists of two words so in our uh, scale X like I said I, al I already put MD10 so I already use this word, one word, so one byte equivalent to two byte or one word. So I already use this word. So the next available uh, word in my memory will be MD14. So if we go back to the PLC, like I said, uh, you have to be careful. We have you have to be careful in this. So we need we can say uh, put 
put MD14 as an example. And I will rename rename this tag as the actual TR2432 uh, actual temperature. Actual temp. Okay. Change that. Now we can try to compile first just to see if we can find some error. So it's saying zero, which is good. And then uh, we can download this to the CPU. Click load. And to view, we can uh, click this monitoring uh, tool. And then what I will do is I will open my camera. Okay, let's go from here. So, um, like I said, I have a, this is my setup. So the the sensor, sorry, I break, break it. <laughs> oh jeez, I'll remove it. So this is the cable of the sensor. And I will plug directly the sensor to the analog input cards. Okay. So as you can see, I already have a reading from the sensor. It says 18.7 degrees Celsius. And you will see on my PLC, it's also the same. Actually, it's not the same. It's actually fluctuating a little bit for some reason. If you will see on my sensor, it's stay 18.7, but my PLC say, saying 18.8, 18.8. 7, 8, so it's not really stable. It's nothing for a temperature sensor, but imagine if you are using a pressure sensor, for example, and you use a pressure sensor for level monitoring. So a little bit of changes could cause, uh, you know, inaccuracy. So, um, the reason I mentioned that is I will, we will also try to uh, compare that uh, signal from the uh, analog, uh, from analog to IO link. So, okay. So, just to show you the our uh, uh, instruction is working. So that's how you're gonna, you will program the uh, analog uh, in the TIA software. So, yep. So, by the way, so this is my setup. So this is my CPU. I have the cable connected to one of the Ethernet ports of the IOLink Master. And then this is the Ethernet, another Ethernet cable uh, directly connected to my laptop. This is the power. And this is one of the jumper cable that we can uh, use to connect the temperature uh, sensor. Right, so I'm going to uh, go offline. And then I will rename this one as the analog. And then let's, let's uh, add another network and let's name this one as ioling.com. All right, so IFM uh, have some function blocks, uh, data block, and then the, for their IOLing sensor and devices, which you can find on their website. You will need to sign up to have an account in your respect, respective count, countries or current location before you are able to download the file. So this is how it looks like. Right, so you can find it here, support, click download, and then click IO link setup guide and software. 
So I got uh, different. We got different startup package intended for different manufacturers or industrial protocols. So you can find the profinet here. So you can download that one when you click that. And also we have for Propibus, Modebus, Ethernet IP, that one, Ethercat, so yeah. The startup pack packages contains add-on instruction or function block uh, as, a, as a form of uh, support or as a form of uh, documents that you can uh, use for integration. Um, now let's go back to the uh, in TIA portal so far. The first requirement in the data block, so let's, let me just open that data block. I don't I already downloaded some. So my sensors is TR I'm just gonna open the camera so you can see. Okay, so this is a TR2432. So on the function blocks uh, or data blocks, you only need to search that. So here TN, so I can use this um, data block for temperature sensor starting the model with TN or TR. So all you need to do is drag and drag. Click automatic. Now we have this data block. The first requirement in the data block section is the sensor word data, sensor W data. This is the input word address location of the temperature sensor in the IOLINK master. You can uh, see this under the device view of the IOLINK master and the network topology. So let's open that. Right, so network topology. So this is uh, uh, what I put initially. The reason why I disable uh, every port is because I'm just using the uh, Ionic master as a gateway for me to communicate directly to the PLC as I don't have an Ethernet switch. So, for example, I will use uh, port number three. So, I will delete this one first. And then I will look for this information so the size of the information depends on the instrument or sensor uh, for temperature sensor it usually contains two bytes of data or one word or one word so i will use that and drop it here so that regardless uh, why did I put two bytes? So let me go back to the website again. So TR2432. Every IOLINK uh, device or sensor, regardless of the brand or manufacturer, got an IODD uh, file or what they call electronic description file. We will use this file to interpret the data coming out of an IOLINK sensor. In our case, we're using this temperature sensor. And all you need to do is just click this download and look for this PDF file. All right, so why did I put uh, two bytes? Because as per this, um, uh, as per this information, the sensor transmitting 16 bits of information. So 16 bits is 2 bytes. Okay, so that's why I put 2 bytes. 
and the import word address at port number uh, 3 is starting at 668 so we have to put IW68 on this field right and then I will rename this tag as TR2432 TR2432 port 3 okay change that and the next requirement or information that we need to put is the gradient right with IO link uh, the values are mostly uh, trans trans transparent as integer including decimal places so the the function blocks or data blocks automatically convert these integers and calculate the floating point values to do this uh, calculation the value gradient is needed uh, so again let's check the IODD file so here it's saying it said uh, says uh, point 0.1 so we have to put, put point 0.1 now the, say, the third field we need to put information is the PQI B data so um, the P according to the uh, documentation in the profinet or IOLink specification every IOLink master provide a PQI diagnostic byte so um, the PQI byte is always the last byte in the sub module address range to find this uh, we have to go back to the device view uh, of the IOLink master. So, what is the last byte address? So, it's going to be 70. So, we have to put 70 here. IB70. So, that's my diagnostic. So, yeah, we, can, we can rename that one as diagnostic. Diagnostic. Byte. right and the temperature so here same same with what we did here well like said um, it's a two word so we have to put uh, properly the location of the information so uh, I would say for example I would like to put the double word address in the memory let's say MD not MD10 because we're using that one already I'll, I will put it to MD2 and then I will rename this tag as the actual um, TR2432 actual actual temp All right, and then on the data block, you can use this uh, information or output for diagnostic. Let's say, for example, uh, I only data valid. So you can use this uh, for diagnostic if I only comb is okay or loss, meaning the sensor is not is connected, but the wire for the I.O. link output, for example, has been cut or loose. So we can uh, uh, put this one to one of the memory bit. Uh, let's say M0.0. Um, this is a boolean. Uh, and then uh, rename this tag as D. Mm, let's say um, I.O. link com OK. I only link com okay and then device error maybe uh, we can use this diagnostic bit if sensor is faulty um, so we can address this one as n 0.1 and then I will rename this tag as sens sensor 
all the okay and then device av availability we can use this diagnostic bit let's say if no sensor attacks so we can put a memory bit we can put this to m0 m0.2 so that's your location i would say no sensor ah, no sensor attach and we can change that right and then let's say you want to have uh to use the same data block to have a temperature switch hmm. we can maybe put another input output here and 0 0.3 and I will rename this tag as my temp switch, temp switch, temperature switch. Right, so let's try to download, but before that, we have to... Compile. So there's no error. Download this to the device. And click this monitoring window. And I will open my camera. Right. So at the moment, I'm I have my, my sensor connected to directly to the PLC uh, on the analog input card. So I'm reading 18.6. Let's unplug that. So 18.7. Oh why I'm not showing anything <laughs> let's me do let me do something first okay what did I do wrong uh-huh right um, I forgot something to do so if you change something on the uh, the network or the on in the device in the device itself like for example in the ionic master um, some of you might probably encounter this so if you change something don't forget to right click download hardware and device if you made some changes like that now let's go back again okay that's now that's better Right, so I get a sensor, 18.6. So whatever you will see on the sensor, you will also see on the uh, PLC. So there's no conversion losses. Unlike the analog, it actually fluctuates a, a little bit. So here it's very uh, stable. The signal is very stable. Now, um, let's try some diagnostic. Uh, let's try to use the diagnostic output. So I have an output of 1010 through all pulse. So the first uh, thing we can try to simulate is this device availability uh, diagnostic. I'm going to put back the camera. So it's easy. I will unplug the sensor. So it will become zero. I'll put it back. One or two. And then let's try to simulate this output, another diagnostic. Let's say something wrong with the sensor or it's faulty. So what I have here is a sensor or a temperature head evaluation unit and I just actually attach 
on a standard uh, PT100 or PT1000. So as you can see, uh, the sensor said it's error. So device error become true or one. I'll put this one back. 20.4 become pulse true pulse so that's pull device uh, error or if the sensor is faulty and also for the IO link communication um, I cannot uh, test that because I have a jumper cable so but if you have what happened is if you have power on the sensor and you, you lose the communication of the IO link or maybe, uh, for example, the wire bin cut. You can have, you can use that diagnostic pit. Right. <clears throat> now, um, let me uh, take you guys to the real world. Okay. Like I said, allow me to give an give an example by bringing bringing you to the real world of maintenance hiccups. <laughs> I call it maintenance maintenance hiccups. All right, let's go back to the first instruction, and then I'll put the camera back. So, what are the common scenario in the field? So, let's say for example, so I connected this one directly to the analog input cards. Um, some operators like to or play around, mark around the sensor. So, they have changed, for example, the analog start point because the operators or I'm a engineer that doesn't know uh, what I'm doing so sometimes you can it could happen in the pill so if there is a button they like to touch the button so I change the analog start point accidentally for example to two so what happened now is the reading if you will notice the reading in the PLC I'm reading 17 degrees Celsius but on my sensor I'm actually uh, put 19.6 so that's one of the possible problem or issue uh, that you might encounter in the production or in the factory is someone uh, marking around the parameter of the sensor. Now, um, another example, let's say uh, for some reason, this particular sensor has been broken and assuming you will have to put a new one so I will put this sensor uh, back to its factory depot. So reset RES. For me, it's easy because I'm a bit familiar with the parameter. So click that one. Now remember, as you will see on the PLC, you already have an error. You know why? Because the factory default of this sensor is, or the factory, out, factory default uh, analog output of this sensor is current. In our our PLC only accept voltage, so that is one of the problem that you might encounter in the field. So you might accidentally feed a current into an analog input cards, which is the voltage. So that's why you have an error. So that is one of the problem that you might encounter with a traditional system. So you have to read 50 pages of manual before you can. Uh, uh, familiarize with the sensor and someone um, uh, or if the engineer doesn't know what he's doing like I said you might accidentally feed uh, current into a voltage input so that could happen 
and all of them uh, re uh, result into uh, you know production losses or cost you money so uh, we need to check the electrical di diagram you know um, you need to spend some time to study the electrical diagram call the programmer or worse you need to ask an expert and like I said all of them cost money now um, I will remove this and let's try to put it to IOLink master so right so I'll put this one here So immediately, in the, P the PLC reads the uh, value of the temperature sensor. So that's one of the beauty of our link system. It only takes a couple of seconds before you, uh, uh, after you install the sensor, your production uh, could go uh, uh, start again. So um, that is one feature of the IO link. So the parameters or the uh, settings of this sensor can be stored directly into these ports so you can uh, activate that uh, features of the IOLink master so uh, the next time you need to change a faulty or broken sensor all you need to do is, is go to the warehouse or storeroom get a new one and put it in the system and then and then you're back to uh, production so that's save a lot of money instead of calling uh, you know expert to just to replace uh, one sensor so the other thing is with the analog imagine if you if you have around 20 or 50 analog instrument with different uh, analog scale points or use you're using it for different uh, switching output so you'll be in a big trouble if you don't have a backup copy or list of set points of for all those instruments. With an IOLink, like I said, everything is plug and play. So that is one of the beauty of using an IOLink. Now, um, the reason I cite an example is because um, Okay, I think that's it for now for the actual testing. What I will do, um, I will show you some other function blocks that uh, you can use uh, in, pro in, in integrating the IOLIC master. So I will disable this. Disable, not disable. I will go offline. <laughs> and then um, the good thing is Siemens also do have or created their own uh, function blocks for uh, IOLIC. So I will send you or I will put the download link on the um, on my uh, the, the, the video description on this uh, particular tutorial. So you can see it from here, not this one. I will open the other one. So it's going to be looks like this. So there are uh, three types of uh, data blocks so the one intended for IOLink master with four ports and the one intended for eight ports so um, you have a dedicated data blocks or function block for uh, master diagnostic and another one here for uh, the sensor itself or any IOLink device so you can use this one I can show you how it looks like so all we need to do is because I already downloaded that, so click Option, Global ri Libraries, Retrieve Library, and I think I put that one here, this one, yeah, that's the one. Mm, I put this one, let's say, on the desktop. And then it's going to be... Looks like 
Where is it? Where is it? Where are you? Where are you? Hmm. Let me just open my desktop. Um, just give me a sec. Let's try it again. Action, global value. Retrieve. the same so this is the one oh yes of course so you have to click which type of CPU you were using so in my case I'm using the S7 1200 so all you need to do is put this one to a new network let's say for example I got an IO link device and it's going to be looks like this So I'm not gonna discuss this uh, function block, but maybe later on some of my upcoming video, I will I will use this uh, um, function blocks. So um, it's going to be you can find some uh, PDF manual for this one. So and on uh, what are the what it means by and what are the information that you need to put into this data block for the Siemens one so it's going to be looks like this or you can just uh, download it from the uh, website so just look on just click this one so that's the manual for it all right so that's for the Siemens and like I said IFM also provide uh, heaps or function block that you can download on the website so let's try to open some of them so you can you can just click project retrieve so i need to close this uh, project and then find it or is it where did i put that mm. I think it was there. And then here, so when you download the startup package from the website, it's going to be looks like that. So for Propanet, there are different manufacturers. You got you you have Mitsubishi, Kuka, Panuk, but in our case, we're using Siemens. So um, here you can see some function block. So this is intended for every sensor that got an I/O link uh, chips embedded on it. So you got vibration, ultrasonic, temperature, flow sensor, flowmeter, encoder, um, yeah, and photo sensor inductive. So in my next video, I will uh, try to use every single one of them. So kind, please stay tuned on my channel and don't forget to subscribe so let's say for example i would like to open a temperature sensor this one and then i'm just gonna that one here so it's going to be the function blocks going to be looks like this so program blocks Oh, hold on. That's one. This one. So yeah. So this is the function block. So this first function block is to read the process data, and the next the next function block is how to read and write parameter commands, and then the diagnostic. So it's really, really, really cool. I would like to play around uh, with all of this. Now, um, let's go back to our topic.
So, um, let's have a, a quick analysis or another point of discussion here. So, in the field or during the installation, one of the big topic is the EMC or the electronic magnetic influences. So, if the cable is not laid and connection of the screen is not made professionally, then you are facing issues with the sensor accuracy. In our actual exercise, the sensor and cable is actually only half a meter, meter apart from the analog input card, but you can see easily distinguish that it's literally, um, you know, changing. Even the sensor is not changing, it's fluctuating. The, uh, the reading in the PLC is fluctuating a little bit. So, um, but when we tested the IO link communication, the reading was stable and accurate. So, let's say how much more if the analog device or the sensor is 50 meters or more away from the input card. So, definitely there will be a lot of losses or noise problem on that. And like I said, if the cable is not played professionally, you are in big trouble. With an IO link, uh, the sensor analog signal transmitted digitally and run on a 24 volts DC. So uh, there is no need to use expensive, expensive screen cable in which sometimes even more expensive than the instrument itself. So in the IO link system, a simple M12 jumper cable, cable will do the job. The only uh, limitation is that the distance between the sensor and ILIC master is only 20 meter maximum. But must, but you can always run the Ethernet cable in the field and mount the ILIC master close to the ILIC devices. So you can consider the ILIC as the as your remote remote hub, or simply say uh, a smart alternative for junction boxes. So imagine how clean will be your main control panel. Now this is another thing um, you might also be also you might be also thinking about uh, the cycle time. I found this information comparing the two signal. On the right, uh, on the right is the typical process. Uh, sorry, left is the typical processing time of the PLC which usually 128 milliseconds. With I.O. link, it depends on I.O. link device. You can find uh, this documentation on the uh, description of this on this video. I will, I will uh, put the download link. But just to have a quick uh, quick uh, over oh, quick run on this documentation. So you got four channel in the analog input cards. You enable the current measurement, noise, voltage, suppression, 50 hertz, wire break monitoring activated. So the basic conversion time per channel is 22 milliseconds. And then you activated the wire break plus 10 milliseconds. So you add that. That is 32 milliseconds. So the cycle time, uh, you have to multiply the conversion time the times the number of enabled channels. So that's 32 times uh, 4. So that's is equivalent to 128 milliseconds. In our case, um, uh, in the IO link, uh, the typical cycle time is 2.3 milliseconds. Usually, you can find this information on the IODD file that I showed to you. Let, let me go back quick on that IODD. So my temperature sensor, my minimum cycle time is 2.3 milliseconds. So that's definitely faster than the analog input cards. Now, um, what, what is the uh, future possibilities of this uh, um, IOLink technology? Um, some IOLink master in the market use uh, OPC UA with IFM, there is a dedicated uh, separate Ethernet IIoT port, which means without the uh, detour to the PLC and or SCADA, you can possibly 
read the sensor values and make your own web base or cloud structures or maybe connect it to much higher IT infrastructure uh, directly from this port. So the protocol being used by IFM uh, for this IoT port is JSON interface. You can also uh, find some startup package and sample suggested software on the download page. So you can find it here. Click support, download, and again, I only set up guide and software here. So start a package. So we have some sample software that you can use and sample program, uh, Node-RED or Mosquito, Kitware. So those information. So feel free to play around with it if you wish. So um, yeah. Overall, I would uh, say in my personal opinion that I think I only or the digital signal is far more better and whether we like it or not digitalization is the future of the industry and maybe probably this is my personal opinion soon a wireless industrial protocol running in an iolink communication so that's gonna be exciting so that's all for now thank you and don't forget to leave or comment, to leave a comment and subscribe uh, to get to be up to get updated uh, um, for my new uh, tips and tricks video. Bye bye for now.